Hey guys, it's Jay here. Today's date is the 13th of the 12th, 2016. Um, it has been a fair while since I've made a video and I will apologise. I like to make my videos and I'm home alone and we have a very busy household so it's very rare that I get some time to do stuff like this. Um, no, honestly I can't remember when I made the last video. I think it might have been roughly about two months ago and I probably should have checked that before I made this. But I've only got a little bit of time to do this, so I thought I'd quickly make a very uh, touch base video. So, um, uh, I am six months post op. Um, recovery's been perfect, there's been absolutely no dramas whatsoever with my recovery of um, top surgery with Andrew Ives. Very professional guy, like I said in the past videos, like I wouldn't recommend anybody else in Melbourne to do surgery apart from Andrew Ives. He's absolutely fantastic. Um, let's have a look at the scars, see how they're going. There you go. Voila. As you can see, the nipples are still like a little bit of a, a funny shape and I do still have puckering here. Not so much here, but my right side definitely puckered more than my left side. Um, but that's just part and parcel of having top surgery, I guess. You know, I can get that lipo suctioned out in the future if I want to. That's totally up to me what I want to do. Now, probably if I started training too, I'd probably fill it out a bit more. But um, I've still got a really bad back. I've got no L5 in my lower back. So lifting weights is still not on the cards for me. I have to wait a little bit longer and most likely have surgery to put a sponge between my back and coccyx bone instead of it fusing together with spurs like that. So I can't train because my back's pretty much locked. Um, but I'm guessing training would definitely help fill out you know, the little bits of skin. And as you can see, I'm not exactly in shape at the moment. <laughs> but what are you supposed to do? If you're fucked, you're fucked, you know? Anyway, um, I was talking to my girlfriend the other day and we were talking about the changes and you know stuff like that. And it really occurred to me um, you know, being trans and, and not growing up around guys and having a lot of male friends, I, f I find it quite hard to com communicate with guys and know what to talk about and all that shit. And sometimes I miss that female and female connection. Now, this doesn't mean that I regret transitioning, because I don't, but sometimes I really do miss being connected, like women connect to women, not when women... women <laughs> Men don't connect to women like women connect to women, okay? And although we know what it's like to be female and have the emotions that a female has and all that, as you transition, you do tend to forget because your emotional state changes, your mental state changes, so you don't think like a female like you used to. You don't feel like a female like you used to. So everything's very um, very heterosexual and if you know, you're not going to counsel or anything like that, like I'm not, it can be pretty hard to keep up with at times. But, you know, I found myself thinking that on Sunday, you know, there are certain things I miss about being in a gay relationship too. Like, I don't know, you just, it's hard, it's not hard, it's, it's different. It's very different living as male to living as female. Um, so if you're starting your transition and you're not seeing a counsellor and stuff like that, I'd suggest you just keep going to one because I haven't been to one for about six or seven months and I tell you what, I need to talk to somebody professional because my headspace is going brrrr. But it's, it, unless, it, if you've got male friends and you've been brought up around males, like I had a lot of females around me my whole life, obviously being a gay woman until the age of 34, um, yeah, it's different. <laughs> but just be mindful of it because sometimes it can spin you out. Um, I asked Belle if she thought I'd changed as a person. She said I've changed a little bit. Uh, certain things that um, have changed with me and I think as I transitioned and the hormones started affecting, affecting sorry, my mental state, um, I feel like I've become a bit more of a basic thinker. I'm not as wound up as I was as a female. My emotions don't run at, at a thousand times an hour and I haven't got a thousand emotions running at once. I feel one thing at a time and I process one thing at a time. And to me, it's a lot easier. It's simpler. I, I, I don't sweat lots of stuff. It's all very very small things, like nothing really, you know, what Belle sees as a big thing, I don't see as a big thing, and but I also remember what it's like to be female and have that monkey chatter in your mind, because as a, as a man, you don't get the monkey chatter, it's very silent up there, there's basically nothing going on, 
apart from what's going on. So if I'm watching TV, that's what I'm focused on. If I'm on my phone, that's what I'm focused on. Well, women are like on watching TV and their minds are going ding, 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 about 10,000 other things that men wouldn't even occur to think about. So it's different. Thinking patterns are different. Um, anyway, back to surgery. So if you guys I have seen on FTM Australia um, have just had surgery like the last four to five weeks, some six weeks, and they're already back at the gym trying to lift weights and do pull-ups. Now listen guys, um, six months until you lift anything, although your scars look okay, you don't know what's going on underneath your scar tissue. You could be tearing all your muscles apart that are being stitched together. So just take it easy and be patient. Um, I miss training, but I'm six months now and I'm probably just ready to really start getting back into it. Because reconstructive surgery is just as expensive as getting top surgery in the first place. So you're spending 10 grand to get top surgery to feel comfortable in your body. Then you're going to push yourself at the gym. You're looking at another 10 grand to get all that damage repaired. So take it easy. Give your body a break, although it doesn't feel like it, because it doesn't recovery doesn't hurt like people think. Your body still needs up to six months before lifting anything heavy. You look at your scars. Look how big they are. Like, you know, they wrap the whole way around. And just because we could only see what's on top, it doesn't mean we know what's going underneath. So be patient. Reconstructive surgery means more time off work more money to fix it to start off with, and then more more time off work, which is obviously more money. Do you really want to be spending $20,000 to get the perfect chest? 10 grand was enough. Just take it easy. Don't push your body. It's muscle. It comes back. You know? Anyway, as you can see, I, I keep touching my back. Um, the acne on my back is still bad, but not as bad as it used to be. Um, I'm taking zinc tablets every day and that seems to be helping. As you can see, I've just been picking my chest because I have a really sweaty job. Um, I still have spots all around here, but nowhere near as bad. My shoulders really cop it. The lighting's not great, but my, I'm going to show you my back. Um, hopefully, you'll be able to see with the lighting, but it's um, you'll be able to see. You can see the spots on my back. Like, you know, it's all there. Up around here is definitely my worst area. I'm always forever picking. Um, it doesn't matter what I do. I shower twice a day. I use anti, you know, acne shit. I'm on Acme, I'm on zinc, I'm on bloody proactive. And, you know, I'm still getting spots. I'm a year and a half on testosterone. They say the first two years could be the worst. But I'm very, very, very lucky that my face hasn't been attacked. So it's on my back and I do my best with it. But, yeah. Um, this is a really quick video to say hi. Oh, the facial hair, I can finally show you what's going on there. As you can see... Mm. It's all starting to come through. Now my father, my mother, sorry, my father and my brother um, both can't grow facial hair. They both never had a beard, nothing. And I'm growing a fair amount compared to them. It's all still starting to fill in around here, as you can see. But, you know, it's there. My brother's only got this little bit, and he can't even really grow here. It just goes a little bit under here. But just because you're... You haven't got a hairy family, it doesn't mean you can't grow hair. Because a lot of people say, check your genetics. Now, I've been growing twice as much hair as my father and brother, so, you know, trans men do grow more hair than cis men. So keep them back of your hair, don't let that deter you. Um, stomach hair, I don't know if you can see it, but it's bloody there. Lots of it. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a really quick update. So I have an appointment I've got to go to in the next couple of minutes, so this is a real quick one. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm so sorry I've been slack with the videos. I need to pick up my act and communicate a bit more but overall everything's great recovery is fine loving the facial hair do not train too soon after top surgery you're going to fuck yourself over and you're going to cost yourself more money be sensible be smart look after your body okay if i don't talk to you you have a very merry christmas a happy new year stay true to you and follow your dreams ciao